Hi, it's Peter again. I wanted to do another little video here just to show a few things that I haven't shown before and um, one or two things that are brand new. So the first thing I want to do, for some people out there who are having problems with setting up their events or alarms or reminders, one thing that you may need to do, especially if you're having multiple calendars, like you have the calendar on your phone and you have the Google Calendar, you, you need to tell Eva which calendar to store the different event types um, on, on your phone. So let's see, I'll try this. Yes, Peter. Display my available calendars. The calendars are displayed. Tap on each one to cycle to ignoring it. Event types are displayed. Tap on each to choose the default calendar where each is stored. Okay, so what you see here is two different lists are displayed. The top one there is the different calendars that I have. And the, the first one is obviously my Google one. And then the third one there is my phone one. And the other one is obviously just a different one. And you can tap on those on the top list there to say ignore a particular calendar. So if there's any events that get put into that calendar, you'll just say, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about them. And I don't want you to look at them to give me reminders or anything like that. And then the bottom list there, that basically shows you the four different types of um, entries that Eva creates and stores in a calendar. So in this case, reminders, so when I say a quick reminder, like remind me you know, to take my medicine or something like that at 5 p.m., I've chosen to put, those, to put those reminders in my Google Calendar. And then events, if I say you know, schedule um, dinner with friends at 6 p.m. or whatever, like a more detailed event as opposed to a reminder, I've got that to go into the Google Calendar as well. And then the actions um, where I'm saying, you know, at, at 5 p.m. turn on Wi-Fi, I'm actually just putting that in the phone calendar because that doesn't need to go in the Google Calendar. And likewise with the alarms, if I say wake me up at 8, 8 a.m., then that goes in the phone calendar and not in the Google Calendar. So just um, just a way of keeping everything organized. So for those that didn't know that this existed, it's documented in the help, but anyway, it's uh, worth looking at. Um, next thing I want to talk about is um, the new calculator function that I've put in here that I just just finished off. So let me give you a bit of a demo of that. Yes, Peter. What is 10 times 35? 350. Multiply that by 4. 1,400. What is 15% of that? 210. Divide that by 7. 30. Subtract 15. 15. Yeah, so that kind of shows you it's basically a, a running calculator there where it keeps keeps what the last value was and you see I'm using the word that or just not putting in a word at all to refer to the previous number and you can you can start again basically with a new a new calculation just by not referring to what's already there so let me just do a, di a different one yes Peter Calculate 10 plus 4 minus 3 plus 8. 19. What is 15 times 25? 0. What is 15 times 25? 375. Divide that by 10. 37.5 Multiply that by 2.875 107.8125 Okay, so you can see how, again, just kind of ongoing. So you can mess with that a little bit. It does, you can do um, percentages just like I did earlier and you can do the square root and you can do square and you could do you know what is five to the power of five or whatever you wanted to do so the, the, all the functions are documented in there so you know, it's just kind of neat and it's fairly quick to use and in fact it's probably quicker than 
opening up the calculator and typing on your screen and it reads um, the voice recognition works really really well with numbers so I don't think you'll have too many problems with using this so anyway I hope you enjoy that new function okay one other thing I want to show you here is the new um, well it kind of already existed but I enhanced it the date and time functions now you can actually ask for the date or the time in a particular place and if you're specifying towns near you um, it'll recognize that and if you specify a, a major city in another country it'll recognize that as well so let me show you this yes Peter what's the time in Sydney right now it's 9 8 a.m. in Sydney what's the date in Tokyo It is Saturday, February 4th, 2012 in Tokyo. Okay, so you can see how that works. That's really very quick to find out what the time is in another in another city somewhere. Handy if you're making international calls. And the other thing I did too was with the uh, business lookup, it, you can now look up other cities as well. So say if I wanted to find a restaurant in Sydney, even though here I'm in the US. Yes, Peter. Find sushi restaurant in Sydney. I found the following listings for sushi restaurant in Sydney. And you see there, 8,935 miles away. What was really interesting was uh, the other day I tapped on one of these and I guess there's only two there I tapped on one of these and I, I said get directions to that and <laughs> it told me it was going to take 55 days to get there and uh, so I was like really interested in what the routing was to get there and I followed the routing it took me over to um, Vancouver and then the next step from Vancouver actually said paddle across the Pacific <laughs> to Tokyo <laughs> and then from Tokyo it had me paddling across the Pacific to Darwin again and uh, finally you know working my way all the way down to Sydney I thought it was pretty funny it had me laughing quite a lot I just thought it was neat that it forced you to paddle across the Pacific anyway I hope you enjoy these new functions there'll be more videos to come so thanks a lot